right? Shalom. First and foremost, we want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rakakradash. Yahweh being the Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in, Ha'adha, Sham name, Yahweh Shai, being the begotten Son, meaning He delivered, He saves, Rakakradash, Holy Spirit, double honors unto the apostles and elders, great most in our will. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all. Back at it again with another lesson through the spirit of power, Yahweh Bashim Shai. More willing, this video is edifying. All right, I got the beloved brother Mayaka Allah with me. You know, and um, pretty much want to do a lesson on how you cannot upset a uh, prophecy. You know, you can't upset prophecy, man. Because you got a lot of people, and it's funny because right before we we got into this, through the spirit, the brothers I was talking about this uh, practice that a lot of these samurais like to do. Which really this goes back to the scriptures Going to show you those samurais are jakes You know they're Israelites Most of them I ain't going to say all of them But most of them were Israelites man You know But nonetheless um, There's something called the flow state Which basically is like You don't force the course You know you don't try to make anything get forced You just flow through the spirit You know And uh, the scriptures say that the Scriptures say quench not the spirit and the scriptures also say force not the course of the river you know so you can't force the spirit you know what happened with king saul when he forced a burnt offering he ended up going off man you know so you can't force the course if the spirit has something set up then it's set up you can't you can't force it you know and then you got some people who try to upset prophecy to try to uh you know make things not happen you know, because they think that they could overpower the will of the Heavenly Father. And guess what? That ends up playing into prophecy, man. As the scriptures say, 1 Corinthians, uh, where it says, you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. You know? So, that's what it is. You can't upset prophecy, man. You can't really, really can't force the course of the Spirit. Because, really, that's you just moving outside of the Spirit, man. And you're still going to do what's written of you. But, you know what I'm saying? You're going off. And the brother said something through the spirit that was uh, impactful. Like when you said, um, basically, like, I remember we were talking about it, but I'm trying to figure out like, what exactly what you said. Uh, talking about following the spirit. If you're, if you're, if the Lord is dealing with you, through a man of the Lord, right, you can always follow your spirit because the Lord is not gonna, the Lord guides your steps. Right. So the Lord is not gonna steer you wrong if, you, if you're serving Him in true sincerity and in a hundred percent faith. Man. That's right. And the scriptures say that call him Bashim Mashai, one four four on the clock, man. It's spirit. But the scriptures say that uh, Romans eight twenty eight, and we know that all. Matter of fact, let me just get it because that's, that's something that I ch remind myself through the spirit. Like whenever something quote unquote bad happens to me, I'm like, well, the Lord got a bigger plan, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But for the wicked, it's the opposite, right? The wicked, they might have something good, but it could get turned into evil. It tells yeah, that yeah, yeah. in Sirach the thirty ninth chapter, yeah. but. Uh, it also says, for the e evil things are turned into good for the righteous. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahweh Bashmashai, to them who are called according to his purpose. You see? So, for the elect, any bad thing would get turned into good. But for the wicked, and that's the spirit opened up right to it. For the wicked, it gets turns into evil. Sirach Ecclesiastes 39 and uh, verse 25. For the good are good things created from the beginning, so evil things for sinners. The principal things for the whole use of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil, and clothing. All these things are for the good to the godly. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil. You see? So the Lord knows how to flip a good situation to a bad one for the wicked. Yep. And the Lord knows how to flip a bad situation to a good one for the righteous, man. Right. Even those things, you know, in, in the world, like fire or water, honey. You know, honey could make you sick if you eat too much of it. Yep, proverb. Wine could make you sick if you have too much of it. So it, it's good. But it's good for you know if you use it with wisdom, but also it could turn into evil if you if you lack understanding. That's right, Slacky. I cut you off in your speech, it but it says that in uh, it says that in Proverbs it says um, uh, you know, 
eat not much honey. You know what I'm saying? Because you'll vomit it up. Yep. I think that's uh, Proverbs 25, 16, if I'm not mistaken. But you had a precept a lot? Con, uh, let me jump to it real quick. Con. Talking about flowing with the spirit, because uh, the book of Sirach talks about how your spirit will guide you, man. You want, me, spirit, yep. you want me to read it for you? Con, Baba Kishore. What precept? Uh, I believe it was Sirach, I want to say 36. Maybe Con. 37. Yep, Sirach 37. 37. Uh, starting at 13. God, so Rock Ecclesiastes 37 and 13. And let the counsel of thine own heart stand, for there is no man more faithful unto thee than it. Yep. Verse 14. For a man's mind is sometimes wont to tell him more than seven watchmen that sit above in a high tower. Woo. That's, that's going into your subconscious, which is your spirit, man. All right, so when you get that feeling, no, you got to trust that instinct, you know, because uh, if you if you are a man of the Lord, if the Lord is dealing with you, that instinct is going to be, you know, on point, man. All right. You get that feeling. Of course, prove all things. But at the same time, there, there, there's a reason you're feeling that way, man. Yep. yep. Sometimes it could be a demon. That's why you got to be circumspect. That's right. That's why it says verse uh, 15. And above all this, pray to the most yep, high yep. that he will direct thy way in truth. Yep. In truth, because Lord directs always, right? Even even the wicked ways He directs, man. But you gotta pray that the Most High will direct your ways in truth, man. That's right. Verse sixteen: Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. Yeah. And I wanted to bring that out through the Spirit because you think before you speak, you yep, know. Yep, yep. Think before you act. You see, reason. And what do you reason? You reason with the knowledge of Yahweh Shemeshai, like you say, wisdom meeteth them in every thought. Yep. Proverbs three and six: Acknowledge the Lord and all that. Acknowledge the Lord in all thy ways, and He shall direct thy paths. Roughly yep, paraphrasing, yep. that's how you flow through the Spirit. You gotta acknowledge the Lord, because when you try to force the course, things don't work out. Like the Lord said a lot of times, how Jake wanted to do things, but they didn't say Lord willing, mm -hmm. and they said they did not. They didn't ask at the Lord's mouth. You know, because sometimes in this flesh, you try to pave your own way. But the scriptures speak about being self-willed. Not supposed to be self-willed. You gotta follow the will of the Lord. There's a precept that in Proverbs where really there is no self will. There's a precept of Proverbs that goes, uh, the lot is cast into the lap, but the Lord chooses the dispositive. Uh, the dis yep. 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 I think that's in Proverbs. Uh, I want to say, I'm guessing, so I'm going to just hold my peace, but I know it's in Proverbs, though. The whole lot is, you know, the lot is cast into the lap. That's what it says. Yeah, it's the last verse of one of the Proverbs chapter. I want to say 16. Here it is, Proverbs 16 and 33. White Bush Messiah says, The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Yep, yep. Right. So you can cast the lot, but, you know, whatever the lot lands on is all the will of the Lord, man. Yep. That's there is no, you know, choosing your own path, man. The Lord already chose your path before you even are thought, man. That's right. Um, I had a precept because this is a scripture basically backing up how you had individuals who tried to force the course and it ended up playing into prophecy. Because like the scripture say in 1 Corinthians, yep, yep. you can do nothing against the truth before the truth. Bible, can you look for that precept um, while I get this? The water a lot. Corinthians. Oh, okay. Genesis 37, starting at uh, verse 3, just to get the context. It says... Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors, right? So Joseph was technically Israel, whose name was changed from Jacob. His, uh, he was, um, Joseph was his f favorite son, you know? And the other tribes were envious of him because, you know, you know how it is when you have siblings and you have, your parent might have a favorite child. It might make you feel some type of way. But see, the thing about the Lord is the Lord is fair with all his children. Lord might have a favorite child, you know, technically uh, Judah's the head tribe, you know, Yahweh Shai, Shai you spirit. know what I'm saying, that's spirit. his only begotten son, that's his favorite child, you know, but the Lord is still fair with all Israel, man, okay, you know, nonetheless, it says, verse 4, and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him, and Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. 
right? Because that was prophecy about Joseph uh, going to Egypt, man. You know, so basically that's exactly what happened in real life. His brethren bowed down to him, you know, when they when there was a famine in Egypt. And there's getting ready to be a famine in modern day spiritual Egypt, America. There's getting ready to be a famine of food and the money's going to fail, man. Your cryptocurrency, your U.S. dollars, your Federal Reserve notes. Your, your debit cards, your credit cards, that's not going to be able to save you in the day of the Lord's wrath, man. Rich is profit not in the day of wrath. Okay, so the money system is going to collapse, and there's also going to be a famine out here, man. Cannibalism is going to come back to America in a rude, harsh way. And that's biblical prophecy. That's thus saith the Lord. And you can't upset that. It's like the title of the lesson. Can't upset prophecy. And the scriptures say it. Despise not prophesying. Yep, yep, yep. And see, why is this relevant to prophecy? Because the Lord said that he speaks to prophets in a dream and in a vision. Numbers the 12th chapter. Okay, you know, I believe that's around verse six. Now it says, um, and his brethren said unto him, said to him, shall thou indeed reign over us or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, behold, I have dreamed a dream more and behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obeisance to me. Okay, which that goes back to Revelation, the 12th chapter. It talks about the 12 stars over the woman. Three stars got uh, kicked out of heaven, which represents how uh, Esau, Edom, Herod took down the southern kingdom, which that was prophecy about our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right? And they try to upset that prophecy too. Herod tried to put Yahweh Shai to death. Yep, yep. And by him doing that, he was fulfilling prophecy, yep, man. Yep, yep. Can't upset prophecy, yep, man. Nice. You know, call on much more shine, man. And it says... And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I say, I, shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying, right, because Jacob was in the spirit. Okay, envy, you know, if it's not righteous envy, because you could envy somebody in righteousness where you are provoked unto good works, you emulate their righteous yeah, works. Yeah. But if you envy somebody in a wicked, fleshly, malice sense, you know, because he got status and you don't, and you feel some type of way about it, then that's wicked, okay? That's not operating in the spirit. But nonetheless, it was all through the will of the Lord, and we're going to read about it, okay? And it says, uh, I'm going to skip down to the point where it says, uh, verse 18, and when they saw him, because Joseph was looking for his brothers, and when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Conspire means to breathe together. Okay, con meaning with, inspire meaning breathe or inspiration. So they all made a plan together to come against Joseph, right? But this is through the spirit. Verse 20, come now, therefore, and let us slay him. Or verse 19, here's the point. And they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit, and we will and we will say some evil beast had devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. So by them trying to force the course and kill Joseph, it ended up playing into prophecy, man. Because what happened? Joseph ended up getting slow, uh, sold off into slavery because, uh, you know, Judah convinced their tribes to sell Joseph into slavery. And so basically, you know, that was where the prophecy had to be fulfilled. Yep, yep. So now skipping down, matter of fact, you got that precept on you, Malak? 2 uh, Corinthians 13 and 8. Come. Uh, Isaiah 55 and 11 too, whenever. Uh, Come, Malak. You got it. 2 Corinthians 13 and 8. Yep. Okay, let me get that real quick. Because as the scriptures say, we're going to read it. 2 Corinthians 13 and 8, it says, For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the yep. truth. That's right. So if it's a prophecy, like Shur said, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, No one of these shall fail, none, none shall want her mate. Isaiah 34 16, man. So the prophecies will not fail. But this is uh, Genesis 50, starting at verse uh, 20. It says, But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but the Most High meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. You see, so that goes back to Romans 8 and 28. His brethren thought evil to slay him, sold him into Egypt. But that was the will of the Lord. The Lord turned a bad situation to a good one for the righteous. OK, 
okay? Because you can't upset prophecy. Now, uh, you said Isaiah 55? 55 and 11, Bubba. Con, let me get that right quick. Because a prophecy is all the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is prophecy, man. So if you're trying to upset the word of the Lord, you're trying to make the most high a liar, man, which is impossible to do. That's right. Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Yep. Everything the, the Lord says he's going to do is going to happen, man. You cannot upset prophecy, man. You cannot upset the Lord. The Lord's undefeated in everything he's ever attempted. I can't even say attempted or anything he <laughs> wanted to do. Right. Right. Shit, I feel you. Even when the Lord attempts up, he still comes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Second Ezra 16 is 16. And it says, like as an arrow, which is shot of a mighty archer, returneth not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. That's right. So the word don't go out void, man. Okay. Salakia. You know, but the word don't go out void. Thank you. Thank you too. Spirit, call him Mushroom Outside. Open the door before the, you know. Call him Mushroom Outside. Open the white pearly gate. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right, brother. Hey, let's get this uh, precinct real quick. I'm going to get this flow, flow through the spirit, man. It's like you try to wrap it up. John 10 and 34. And it says, yeah, How should I answer them? It is, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. If he called them gods unto whom this, the word of the most high came and the scripture cannot be broken. Mm. So the main point of that scripture is what? The scriptures cannot be broken. So you can't upset the prophecy. You can't force the scriptures to, to, to go the way you want it to go. It's going to go the way you how much Mashiach has it set up to go. And either you align yourself with it or you try to fight against yeah. it, but you're going to fail. And by you fighting against it is prophecy within itself. So it's like you losing on every side. And that's the true definition of if you can't beat them, join them. Yep, yep. You know, because a lot of people think they manifesting things on their own. Nah, it's more so you just was aligned in the will of the Most High at that point. That's all it really is. Do you think you got free will? No, that's the Lord got you in a trick bag, man. Yep. Do you think you, you could upset prophecy? Nah, man. He's using you to fulfill prophecy by you trying to upset prophecy. <laughs> that's right. It, it's it's the Lord is the man. He's so masterful in his tactics, man. Every action is a is a every action a man takes is for a purpose, man. That's right. And that's the spirit. Because I was watching some video the other day, and they said, "Look, even when you have a small, even if you have a small talk, speak with intention." Yep, yep. You know, and that's real. But the last precept I had on the screen was a Second Peter one and nineteen, where it says, "We have a more sure word of prophecy, man." So that means what? That these prophecies they're going to be fulfilled. You know, they're a sure word of prophecy. They shall not go out void, man. Second Ezra's uh, 15, chapter 1 and verse 2. Or Second Ezra 15, verse 1. I'm going to go to verse 2, Lord willing. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. That's right. So, meaning what? They're going to come to pass. Romans 3 and 3. For, so, what if some did not believe? Shall the unbelief of some make the word of Yahweh Shai without effect? God forbid. Yep, yep. So, just because you don't believe it's going to come to pass, well, guess what? So, what? It's going to come to pass. Romans 3 and 3. That's the spirit. I was watching the movie The Matrix, the second one the other, the other day. And then uh, the dude Morpheus was talking to another guy who didn't believe in what Morpheus believed. And then the other guy was like, yo, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in your beliefs. Morpheus telling him, my beliefs don't require you to believe, man. <laughs> God. Uh, it doesn't matter if you believe or not. The Lord is true, man. It's faithful and true. So it's gonna, it's gonna, the word, the, man is gonna, he's gonna accomplish everything he desires to accomplish, man. That's right. And since you didn't believe, you're gonna be destroyed. Yep, yep, yep. All the unfaithful well, shall die in their unfaithfulness, unfaithfulness man. man. Okay. Revelation 21 and 8 says the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable, you know, they're all gonna get caught in that lake of fire, which is the nuclear missiles, man. Yep, yep. Okay, so if you don't believe in these words, you through. Point blank, period. This is Matthew 5 and 17. Think not I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And see, I brought this out through the spirit because you can use this priest to back up how you're supposed to keep the commandments to the best of your abilities. But also, Yahweh should say he didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. He came to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. And what was a part of the law and the prophets? 
prophecies about Yahweh yep, Shai. Yep, yep. And those prophecies he came to fulfill. So this, unless the Lord has set up through the Spirit, otherwise, this might be the last one. You know, unless the brother got some finals. This is uh, Luke 24. And uh, verse 44. It says, Luke 24 and 44, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. Right. Everything written according to the will of the Lord, prophecy is going to be yep. fulfilled. Yep. You know? Though it tarry, wait for it, man. That's right. Because it will surely it come. Woo! Sure word of prophecy. Okay. And it says, Which were written in the law of Moses. And in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. You see? So everything that's written, the Old Testament concerning Yahweh Shai either has been fulfilled thus far or is getting ready to be fulfilled in these times. Okay? You know, you got any other finals, Malak? Oh, that's it, Malak. Uh, you know, so with that, you know, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham, Kakwadash. That will honor the apostles of the great most in the world. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and the Bible. Shalom and the Bible.